Hey guys, how's it going today? <laughs> Everybody's already here. Jeff, Grim, Brandon, how's it going? Um, can you hear me all right? I'm trying yet again another audio setup. Uh, I think I'm a little bit far zoomed out. Maybe I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Let me try that. Okay, that's a little bit better. A little bit closer up. Jab Skyward. Let me go. And I actually forgot to share this to the FPV Builders Group. So I'm going to do that right now. We'll let everyone get up in the, in the chat. And we are about to kick it off. Talk about drone sizes today. And if we have a little time, maybe we'll talk about uh freedom spec which is something that we've been trying out in the houston crew right now oh gosh how is everyone doing today what are you guys up to everyone leave in the comments what size you are flying, what it is, and whether you bought it or build it. I want to get a good sense of what you guys are all working with right now. Let's kick it off. Hey, Ben T is here. Jeff is here. Ghost and Evan Hall. Oh, he made it to this one. Thank you, Evan, for making it to the live stream. We're still getting used to this new workflow. Got a new setup going on. Uh, and I am gear whoring on this camera gear just as much as I am on my FPV gear. Check this out, guys. Mike Bergman, what's going down? Check this out. Oh, I can make it really moody in here. Uh, I got the lights on the remote control. Let's see. That looks pretty good right there. Um, how is the sound? Is it okay? Is the mic too close? can move it back just a tad. That's about uh, 18 inches away right there. Joseph Dahari is in the house. Ghost is flying three, four, and five inch builds. Uh, I'm kind of doing the same. Beloved Lion is here. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive right in. Jason, thanks for letting me know the sound is good. Let's talk about... The poll results, you guys answered the poll. Poll for the live stream is every Saturday. Uh, I'm going to release a poll for a topic for us to discuss together on the live stream. And then live streams are always going to be Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. So this week's poll was what size drones are everyone flying? Wanted to see what everyone was doing. And it is very interesting. So... 57% of you guys said you are, are flying primarily 5-inch. 10% uh, only are flying 4-inch. So there is a resurgence in 4-inch, but only 10% of the people out there are flying as their primary flyers. 22% are flying 3-inch. That is still a very popular size. Midway between the micro and the full size. Whoop, there it is. 8% of you guys are there and six inch or larger. You long range head guys. It's very few, only 2% of everyone is flying that. So let's everyone leave in the comments um, what you're doing for reviewing the drone sizes poll right now, as you can see right there. Uh, let's make it a little more like this so that you guys can see my beautiful face a little bit better. So very interesting, but five inch is still king. Now in the comments, when you're leaving what type of build you're flying primarily, um, I'd like you to also chime in. Did you buy it or did you build it? Uh, what is the most popular thing? Tanker Tweak is here. FPV Trucker is flying a 3-inch Apex and a 4-inch QABS. Uh, I like that combination. I'm still working on my Apex 4-inch. Motor should be here any day now. Lone Star is flying a 2-inch that he bought, a 2.5-inch that he built, a 3-inch build, 4-inch bought. I like that combo back and forth. Um, I kind of tend to do the same. I like to build some of my own quads, but when you really want to get up in the air and you want to try something new, 
It's nice to see what the bind and fly manufacturers are doing. It saves you so much time. You can just get in the air so quick. Joseph is flying a three inch that is fun as F, but nothing beats the sound of a five inch. That is very true. Mike Bergman is building a lot of stuff down there, three, four, and five inch, but more three inch than anything. I uh, can totally understand that. Randy Mad Menace is here for the beard grooming tutorial. Don't just leave it alone. It was meant to be. Yes, the beard grooming tutorial. Thanks to everyone going crazy with Super Chats last week. Uh, that was kicked off by Mike Rollins. Bubba came in in the clutch with a gigantic Super Chat that put it over the top. Uh, Lamone from the Houston crew was also super chatting in there. So just a few short minutes till we do a live grooming tutorial here with the product of the day. Today's live stream is sponsored by Rapid Beard. There is a link for the description below. And today, if you purchase this, you can actually get 50% off of this Rapid Beard product. So as soon as we finish covering the sizes, we're going to go over that. So stay tuned if you're here for the beard grooming advice. Uh, I left my face extra unkept today, uh, even more so than usual just so that i can show you how effective this product is uh, so stay tuned for that you guys are crazy making me do live beard tutorial that is insane randy did not gonna let me forget he flies an eight inch uh, no wonder randy is the biggest and the baddest of quads <laughs> ghost fbb is mostly doing builds no more bind and flies uh, i totally understand uh, Jeff Schubert is about to buy a four inch micro long range, kind of like this one right here. Here is the Fly Roo Explorer, the one that kicked off this whole trend that was started by Dave C. Uh, it's been really cool getting to work with Dave C a little bit. I'm going to build up his nano long range project very soon. I got some of those 18650 holders and I'm gonna print a frame on one of these 3D printers that you see behind me. If you look right there at my Prusa MK2S, you can see a pod that I just printed today. Let's take it off the printer. Ooh, this is a pod that I printed for the open racer that we've been flying at the night spot. Uh, I'm going to be doing a review on this very soon. And so I needed a fresh pod for this because mine's a little bit crashed up because I've been flying it to bits. Uh, let's get caught up in the comments. Glenn is flying a five inch bind and fly. What kind of bind and fly is that, Glenn? Sky Strider is mostly building. He's checking out that 5-inch QAV Johnny FPV edition with 2207 motors and an Apex 4-inch on 1607. I really have been wanting to check out that QAVS. That does look really cool. Uh, Mike says that he's really excited about the Armitan HD tadpoles. Yes, I do have the 3-inch tadpole prototype right here. Uh, ever since I built that space grade, if you haven't seen my review that I just put out yesterday on this Armitan Tadpole prototype, go check that out. I'm bringing you guys into the design process. I've been getting to work with Armitan. You can see the shirt right there. I've been kind of joining their design team. Uh, that's been an amazing process right there. And I'm bringing you guys into that discussion. So there is a comment period now. If there is new features that you guys want that we haven't included, leave them in that video description and we'll try to get them incorporated. They've been extremely responsive. I've already made three suggestions on what should be added to this. Uh, we have added the whoop mounting board at my suggestion. We've increased the camera cage size from nano to micro to be able to uh, accommodate the Nebula Pro, which I have installed right here. So if you want to check that out, go check out that video. Um, let's get caught up in some more of these comments. Jason Mendez is flying a five inch, two and a half inch and three inch. Uh, da Davidaya has a seven inch, six inch, two and a half inch. Oh my gosh. He's got a ton of quads over there. Uh, Silver Fox loves his Explorer V2. Uh, yes, it is not that great in the wind. So that is the thing. The new ultralight trend uh, is very, very popular, but they don't always do the best in the wind. That is why if you really were going to go mountain long ranging and with superior HD footage, you still may want to have a seven inch because that seven inch is going to stay a little bit more stable in those mountain winds. 
Uh, Mike Bergman has built every quad he owns, which is about 80 as of now. Wow. He's probably built uh, about as many quads as I have. I'm, I wish I would kept better track. I'm not sure if I'm over 100 yet, but it's definitely been a lot. Brandon is back. What's going on, Brandon? Um, Ghost FPV has an eye on the 7-inch Hyperlights. That does seem like a pretty good option. I do have a review on the FR7 open source 7-inch uh, long-range setup. I actually went analog with that one with a really high-powered BTX. So that's coming up on the channel soon. It's already completed. Uh, it'll be published probably the next two, three weeks. Randy has a 7-inch TBS. Uh, what do you think of the Baby Hawk 2 HD? They hit a sweet spot with that one. I am really excited for that one. Um, there is a lot of competition in that size, but I think Emacs really kind of hit a nice thing that's bashable, that's free, stylable, and it's kind of uh, in that in-between size. If you wanted a little bit less power, you could run a 3-inch prop, but I think it does accommodate that 3.5-inch prop that they have. I'm really interested in that 3.5-inch prop size. I have an iFlight ProTech that I'm going to check out thanks to Bubba on that, uh, and that has that 3.5-inch size prop. So we're going to see if that is a sweet spot. Smalls, has the Protec 25 and 35 and a Chimera 7. Ben William is uh, flying a 5-inch, but he wants to get some parts to build a 3-inch Hex. Ooh, I've never tried a Hex, so maybe that should be coming up soon. Travis is saying 4-inch versus 5-inch for racing. I've actually done a couple of videos like that. I've compared 3-inch, 4-inch, 5-inch on the tracks. I've raced multiple, uh, like the Twig Racer, 4-inch 4, the Dolphin HD 4-inch. Uh, more recently, I did 5-inch ultralight like the Team Black Sheep Pod Racer. Took all of those things on tracks. They actually have the speed and maneuverability. One of the things, though, that's tough about those ultralight builds, even with racing setups, is that they can potentially have the speed, but they don't have the crashability, um, especially those smaller, lighter motors. The motor bells are very thin to get the weight down, and so they can't really take gate hits. But if by racing you just mean flying quickly through the feet, through trees, they're actually a lot of fun, and those lighter, smaller builds make a lot less noise. So you're much less likely to bother anybody that's in the the area. Rick Zapeta says that I hope everybody's good tonight. I hope you're good do doing good too as well. Rick, Mike is saying the tadpole is one of the best toothpick frames in the biz. I have to agree with you. Ben T has the Protec 5. Ghost says that four inch wins. Uh, not according to the poll, but I do. I am really excited about the resurgence of four inch. Um, I'm really getting excited about this um, Apex four inch. I'm going to put some gigantic motors on that thing and make it a freestyle equivalent to the five inch that I built up. On the five inch, I put the uh, Ethics Moon Boot, the 2407 gigantic motors on 2200 KB. So I'm going to make an equivalently large motored version of the four inch. So stay tuned. But the poll results say that five inch is still the king. So let's pause right there. Uh, I'm going to do the time for the live Rapid Beard sponsored by Rapid Beard beard proof tutorial uh portion of this video so stay tuned we're going to come right back after this tutorial and finish talking about different drone sizes and i'm going to give you quick recommendations of what i think are the best ones to buy at each size here so this beard is really sort of a weird mistake. You see, I've never had facial hair before, and I didn't think it was even possible. I have a weird patchy sort of a facial hair pattern, and I've never had any sort of facial hair other than a little bit of scruff on the chin. Well, when I got sent home during the pandemic uh, to work from home almost a year ago, you see the last day I was actually working in an office was March 12th of 2020. And so I just kind of stopped shaving because I wasn't going in the office. You know, back then we didn't really know how long this was going to take. So we figured worst case, I'll be in the office a couple months. So maybe I'll just save an extra 60 seconds every morning and never have to shave again. Uh, well, three months went by, four months went by, five months went by. And then all of a sudden I was just like, well, uh, the patchiness started like connecting together and it started forming sort of a weird looking beard like thing. Like 
And I just said to myself, well, I might as well just not shave for a year, thinking there's no way we're going to be home for a whole year. And we were home for a whole year. We were home for a whole year. And that is where my friends over at Rapid Beard stepped in. Um, I needed something to take myself from looking like a homeless geek to looking into homeless chic. So this is the Rapid Beard Special Edition Kit. If you open it up, we have a various amount of products. This is a premium beard palm that you massage into your beard. It gives it that luscious look. It keeps your beard from doing this kind of thing where everything's going off to the side. You look like a crazy person when you wake up. Have you ever heard of bed head? Wait about bed face. That's what you got to deal with every single day. Then they have this beard oil. You see, you take the dropper and you put a little couple of drops on your finger like this. Then you massage the oil from the front of your face all the way to the tip. You keep applying drops of oil till you've thoroughly coated each part. And how do you manage all of the tangles and swirliness? Well, it comes with this beautiful wooden brush, the kind of brush that you would brush a horse hide with. This is what you use on your face. And you can just all of a sudden see that wild unkemptness just coming into place. Look at that. You just brush it out till it's nice and smooth. You get make sure you get a little bit on the bottom going like that. And then what do you know, guys? Uh, <laughs> hey, hi, Drone69. Welcome to the live beard tutorial uh, that was brought to you, sponsored by Michael Rollins, Lamone, and Bubba. Uh, so after you put this in there, they also have in the kit a pair of wooden things and a little beard grooming device. Sometimes you can get one hair that's scraggly going off to the side, um, getting a little bit older. So some of this beard is starting to turn a little bit gray. So you can trim it up with this. If you go to the link in the description, you can buy this Rapid Beard Kit today for 50% off. I believe the regular price is right about 30 beards. $30. We're talking about beards only because Michael Rollins, uh, he went crazy on the Super Chat saying that if I got $25 in Super Chats, I had to do a live beard tutorial. So you can thank Michael Rollins and Bubba and Lamone for this. Thank all you guys. So if you're interested in this, go to the link in the description below. Get 50% off today only. And thank you, Rapid Beard, for sponsoring this. Check it out. They are responsible for taking me from homeless geek to homeless chic. Now, this may be the last time you see the beard this long. I'm actually due to cut it. It's been a year, so I'm going to trim it. I'm not going to cut it all the way off, but it is going to be trimmed next time. So let's get back to talking about quads. You guys are crazy for making me do that. But if the Super Chats go high enough, we are going to do almost anything on this channel. Let's go back and catch up a little bit on some of these comments. Uh, Duncan is here. Duncan Pope has a three inch X eight. Is that what I think it is? Eight motors. That's crazy talk. Um, Rick says his go-tos now are two and three inch for racing. Jeff over in Wisconsin, the four inch pod racer has made me look like a seasoned pilot. I do really love that pod racer by team black sheep. It's so cheap too. It's only like 25 bucks. So Really nice option. Sky Strider said that 4-inch needs more props. What size motors are you using for your 4-inch? I have really, really liked the 2004 motor size. Um, I have a motor video coming out on Friday on the new Toka 2004. The go-to prior to that has been the Brother Hobby 2004. I like to go to the 3000 and up KV um, because I want 4S massive amounts of power for that four inch formula, but I actually like the Toka line by Diatone a little bit better. Silver Fox said everything is a compromise. That is very true. Ghost said he likes the 1606 4000 KV. Uh, Ghost is trying to decide between a four inch and a five inch pod racer. Um, I would ask you and that for that, Travis, are you planning on actually taking it on a track with other people or are you gonna just build your own tracks like in the woods? Um, I can help you answer that question. Let's see. Double A is here. Ghost 
Mike Mogui, FPV. He takes his beard on long walks on the beach. Speaking of that, I almost forgot. I have one more beard tip for you. This is a sandalwood handcrafted comb that I was gifted for Christmas. It is by Cremo, and the sandalwood is just so nice. It comes to a really nice polished sheen, and so you can keep this in your back pocket. It's very nice and thin, and you just kind of brush your beard with it when you're on the go to keep it nice and tight. The nice thing about this is that beautiful aroma, the scent of sandalwood. It makes your face smell like you were just carving out a canoe out of driftwood on the sandy beaches of some beautiful location out in the Caribbean. So if you do end up never shaving again because you're working from home, pick up one of these bad boys as well. Now, <laughs> Jeff is so excited to see you mow that thing. Yes, it is going to get mowed. Hi, Drone69 says, what's up? What's going down? Uh, let's catch up on these comments. Talking Ben T, thank you for the super chat. Howdy from Austin. Great stream tonight. Ben, I really love your beard. See, I wish that my beard was a little more full. Look at that. He's got it nice and tight and how it fits to the face very nicely. Uh, I really appreciate that. I love going to Austin. I took a little day trip out to Fredericksburg with the wife during the week, took a couple of days off, and we went to Fredericksburg uh, in, here in Texas, which has a lot of wineries and breweries, and just kind of a tour. I found if you go during the week, a lot of those hot spots are mostly empty, so you can just have your pick of any locations, sample some beautiful wines and some tasty beers, I went out to the Oldstadt German brewery out there. It was quite delicious, and there's not a lot of people out there during the week, during the day, so you can spread out socially distance quite nice. On the way up there, I actually did stop in Austin, Ben T. I stopped at my favorite place to eat, which is one in a million. It's right off of 35 and Cesar Chavez. It is one of Austin's rare treats. If you're ever in that area, go to one in a million. It's been on the Food Network, Man vs. Food. I believe that the Man vs. Food guy ate like four Don Juan tacos, which is aka El Taco Grande. It's just like this beautiful mound of egg, sausage, bacon, uh, potato, and cheese. Uh, but the UT students knew he was coming, so they flew in a professional eater like two weeks before who broke the record that he was unable to beat. So I thought that was kind of funny. Okay, back to the comments. Sky Strider says that he's having problems with the 2004 KV uh, and the T-mount. T-mount is the worst. There are some more that are coming out that are going to be the more traditional mount if you're waiting for that. Uh, Jeff got the go-to V, the Goku VTX. Hey, uh, I'm glad. Thanks for letting me know you got that, man. Uh, hope like that can get you up in the air. Jeff was one of the winners on the last live stream. And uh, there was one other winner who should be getting their prize very soon. Um, that is awesome. Glad to get you guys some stuff. Hopefully keep you guys flying just as much as I get to fly. Let's catch up in the comments and then we're going to go through a round of recommendations at quads at every size that we've covered today. Um, so double A, what's going down, man? Uh, man versus food. That's right, man. I love that place. You know what else I like about one in the million in Austin? If you're ever in that area, if you ever go there, you know, I mean, it's not the same during pandemic, but prior to pandemic, the owner would often be there. He would always be willing to just greet you as you walked in the door. It felt like coming home. He would always shake your hand. Um, I have been shaking this man's hand for over 20 years. Um, so I first went there as a teenager, been going back all the time. I got to take a picture and pose with him, uh, him and his son, who is now taking over the, the greeting duty at the door. And so that was really exciting for me. Uh, so, yeah. Chet says that he's doing the Apex on X Nova 1804. Ooh, I really like to find out that that motor combination. How do you like those Apex, uh, or I'm sorry, the X Nova 1804s? And he's also got a Slam Nasty 4 inch. Uh, on the 3100. Let's see. Some dude says, let's hear more about this taco. Man, I, if I go there again, I'm going to have to make a review. If you've ever seen, I've only done one food review on the on the channel, and it was on the Popeye's spicy chicken sandwich. Mm, 
that chicken was delicious. I personally think the Popeye's chicken sandwich dethrones Chick-fil-A for the number one chicken sandwich in the universe. Uh, so if you haven't seen that, go check that out. Nobody really watched it because this is in a food channel, but I did have fun making it. Um, Mike Bergman says he's converting that Apex 3-inch with the exact same four or with the same parts to a four inch. Uh, yes, Ben T. So he knows um, the owner of one in a million too. His handshake is known around the world. I don't actually know his name. We always used to call him the Don. Uh, like he was sort of like, you know, like, like the godfather of tacos. Uh, and one time we went there the morning after partying on 6th Street back in my younger days. And one of my friends was a little too hung over to realize that Don had his hand out to shake his hand and he just kind of passed by the Don and didn't shake his hand. So we all made him sit at another table because you don't disrespect the Don under any circumstances. So, okay. So now let's go through recommendations, smallest to largest on what the best bind and flies that you can purchase at every size are. And then I'll make a couple of recommendations on some build at your own frames as well. So let's pull back up this thing right here. So um, probably the best whoop size bind and fly that I'm going to recommend is the Happy Model Mobula 6. I have mine right here. Um, I'm not making recommendations of anything I haven't actually flown. This is still the king up into 2021. I also do really like the Ishin UZ um, 75 or 65 the uzi you know the uzi 85 that one has the experimental 35 millimeter props these are 31 traditional whoop size they both fly around the house particularly good i do recommend if you have crossfire get it because the SPI receiver is not that great these are really good options links to all these will be in the description below this is only 85 bucks it comes with a charger it comes with a few batteries so you can get up in the air with one of these inside your house and fly it year round rain or shine now, when you go up to two and a half inch or three inch, I would say that if you're on HD, the number one thing you got to you got to probably check out that Emax uh, Baby Hawk 2. It looks really nice. Um, if you were going to build something, I might build something like this um, Catalyst Machine Works massive droner that I stuffed a Ishin, uh, or no, I stuffed a Cadex Vista into this thing. So it is DJI two and a half inch. Now at the three inch, like I said, the Baby Hawk HD2 is probably what you're going to want to get for Bind and Fly. If you were going to build a three inch, I would absolutely want to check out this new Armitan Tadpole HD prototype. The release hopefully is coming very soon. I'll let you guys know as soon as I do. And if there's any changes, I'll be making a uh, production version built up of this. I'm also going to be making, um, I haven't decided whether I'm going to do the three inch or the four inch, a sort of Johnny five edition. These prototypes, go watch the video. I'm using the Armitan recommended build flavor, but you know, I always go, Motors up to here. I go with the big dogs. So I'm going to be putting giant motors on one of these things very, very soon. Um, let's talk about four inch. Now there's different schools of thought for four inch. Do you want to go ultra light micro long range like the Flywheel Explorer? Um, there is also a diatone version of this that is very, very nice. The diatone looks a little bit more durable. Uh, but really, this is the one that started it all, the Flywheel Explorer. The motor combination is much more fun to fly than I would think. A lot of these seem to be a little underpowered, but this one is not too bad. Now, if you want a 4-inch bind to fly that is just going to fly more like a 5-inch and just zoom around, I really recommend the Baby Hawk um, 4. The Baby Hawk R4 is 1606 motors by Emacs. It's 4S. It's really fast. You can also fly three and a half inch um, props on there as well. Um, for five inch, there's two recommendations that I make to people on five inch, and there are analog and HD flavors of both. You got to go with either the Diatone Roma. That is my personal favorite. Somebody ever at Diatone is a big tomato fan because they're naming 
everything Roma, and their quads are all pretty juicy. Um, also, the other 5-inch that was the king for several years that has just barely been edged out by that is the Nazgul, the Nazgul V2 or the V1. They're both excellent, uh, whichever one you can find on the biggest sale. Speaking of sales, if you want to keep track of all the sales in FPV, make sure that you are in the Facebook group, FPV Sales Alerts. That's where all of the sales drop in real time. Um, so let's keep going down the list. We covered the Emacs Baby Hawk 2. We covered the Flywoo Explorer. At the 5 inch, we covered the Diatone Roma. There are HD and analog versions. It's really interesting that you cannot build an HD DJI quad for this price. You can buy one for about 300 bucks. And most of my HD quads that I build, the Shocker Tank, the Armatan Badger HD, the Apex HD, all of these DJI quad freestyle builds that I've done on the channel, they all end up costing four to five hundred dollars. So it's amazing that you can buy one that flies, you know, 90 percent as good uh, and get it for like two hundred dollars less. It's just insane. Uh, and it's actually quality. I remember before, back in the day, you would get like an Ishin Wizard and you'd have to wonder, like, was it going to burn up on your second pack? Well, Diatone and iFlight um, are pretty much certified fresh. Gep RC seems pretty good these days. Flywoo's pretty good these days. Uh, there's just a lot of really nice, reliable options. Now, in the seven inch size, I would probably recommend something like this iFlight Chimera. I believe Gep RC also has a Mr. Croc 7 inch that seems pretty good. You're going to spend a little bit more. This thing is $500. And so, uh, like if you're mountain flying or going absolute long range, you see the antennas in the back, you see how long they are and spread out. That's going to give you maximum range. Uh, and you're going to want to put on your DJI goggles some nice patch antennas like the Axie HD. Speaking of patch antennas, a new patch antenna by True RC is released. It's a new uh, version of the X Air. It looks a little bit thinner, a little bit more low profile, less sticking way off of your head like this. So I'm going to have to check that out pretty, pretty soon. So let's check out, uh, catch up with the comments real quick. And then after that, we're going to go through the build it recommendations from Whoop all the way up. Let's see. Binti, yes. Jeff had fish tacos visiting California. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mowgli has a FPV cycle 1S baby tooth. Oh, you mean kind of like this? Oh, I almost forgot to mention that. I have uh, this TP3 1S with the FPV cycle minty green motors. Uh, this is coming up on the channel very, very soon. Uh, this is just a joy to fly. It has the ultra rare FPV cycle all in one whoop board on this thing. This thing is so hard to get. I mean, it's almost like a PlayStation 5 or a set of DJI goggles these days, just really hard. Um, but I was able to get one and it flies amazing. One S power. Can you believe it? Like you just can't believe you're flying a one celled craft. It flies on these 600 milliamp one S. So stay tuned. This review is coming up very, very soon. Almost forgot about that one. So thanks for reminding me, Mogui. Rick says that what's your take on the J Hemku Air boards? Been testing a few lately. They seem pretty good. I've had really good luck with the J Hemku Whoop and the J Hemku 20 by 20. And my favorite thing to run those single layer um, all in one boards, whether it's Whoop or 20 by 20 size, is to run them on something three to five inch ultralight. There are some people in my chapter that are running full-size race quads like this open racer. I was flying this at the night spot last night. This thing has taken a ridiculous amount of crashes. I don't know if you can see just how chipped up the arm ends are on this thing. Um, but there's one guy flying single wood boards. Yvonne, he's currently ranked 10th in the world on the global uh, G multi-GP list. Um, but he's also burned a few of them. So I don't know if single layer is ready for full five inch. Um, I did put the Hi-Fi on RC 45 amp on the prototype five, five inch that I flew. I flew that with the 
Amax Motors, the 2305.5 1950KV on 6S. So I flew that. That held up pretty good. So I don't know. It depends on how you fly. If you're a crasher, if you're a basher, if you're a bando flyer, if you're a racer that's going to be crashing at high speeds, I don't recommend putting um, those all-in-one boards. But if you're a cruiser or if you're building something with a little bit smaller motors, then yes, save the weight, save the money save the build time. I'm really enjoying those. I've used the Jay Himku several times in both of the Shocker builds that I built, the Shocker Light, the five inch and the four inch that's coming out on the channel Friday. I used the Jay Himku 20 by 20 and it was such a delight. Um, Brendan is here. Spider Monkey says he likes the newbie drone. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm like a newbie drone lately as well. Um, Let's see who else. Chet Max says, um, go for the 3,500 KV on three inch. Yes, I do agree. In fact, for three inch 4S, I really like to go closer to 5,000 KV. Um, for the two inch, he likes, Sky Strider likes the Tomoquads Bonsai. Uh, Jeff is paranoid about buying more Emacs products. Yeah, you know, I generally have really good luck with almost everything I've ever gotten from Emacs for many, many years. I put their stacks in my five inch racers for like two whole seasons. Their baby hawks, their everything has been great. I have had some issues in the last review copy I got for the Tiny Hawk Freestyle 2. It just had really bad range in both the video and the control link. Uh, I think that now they're finally offering Crossfire for an option. So I would think anything larger, well, Emacs, I would say they're pretty safe. Um, David, just tuning in, time to rewind. Yes, catch up. You'll catch up quick. Um, some dude is saying he spent more making the Tiny Hawk freestyle than the initial purchase. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, man. Was it you posting um, that you were looking for a new quad because that burned? I don't know. Somebody was looking for one. Uh, yeah, the AIOs, you got to know what kind of build to put them on. Don't put them on a full five inch. Um, Smalls chased a DJI FPV drone with the Chimera video on my channel. I'll have to check that out, Smalls. That sounds pretty cool. Um, <laughs> Mogwi says he used the 450. Jeff says he has had a little bit of trouble with the Emacs products. Uh, Chet definitely wants to build an open racer. It's going to be available soon. We have so many of these. Here's the thing, though. Um, the files are technically released. You can go buy them on Thingiverse, but you have to get them cut. I'm hoping that somebody is going to like make this and just sell it. Maybe Team Black Sheep. I don't know. Um, it is kind of related to the campfire quads though. So I, we, you know, when the video comes out, you'll understand a little bit more, but this thing is a beast. Uh, and if you've seen my race vlogs at the night spot, you know that we race on concrete. I crashed the heck out of these things. So keeping this DJI system safe. Yes, I do race on DJI. I thought I broke my first Vista last night. I had a really hard crash. They built this crazy looking dive gate. Um, yes, dive gates on concrete. I mean, why, why do they do that, guys? I don't know. But <laughs> but it turns out I just uh, nicked the little cable that goes from the camera to the Vista. So that was perfectly fine. This thing's still running. Anybody who is wondering. Um, <clears throat> let's catch up on some more comments. Jeff is saying he's putting the Hi-Fi RC 25 amp F7 in the freestyle. And let's see. I agree with higher KV, says Rick. Okay, so let's go over recommendations from sizes small all the way to large for if you were going to build your own. Now, if you're building your own whoop, is there even a point, guys? Just buy a Mobula or just buy a e uh, Emacs Tiny Hawk 2 or something like that, you know? I think that if you're really a hardcore whoop person, you can build your own, but that's one of the few sizes that you really get a lot of bang for your buck for a very cheap price. If you try to build your own whoop and customize your own parts, you're going to get like 10% extra performance, but you're going to pay almost 200% more. So I just don't think it's really that much worth it. Now, when you get to the two and a half inch size, I don't really like two inch guys go up to two and a half inch. I would build the original 
Tadpole, if you're on analog, if you're on HD, check out the massive drone or two and a half inch. It's not really meant for HD, but you can squeeze it in there. Trust me, I've done it and it's sitting right here. This is an extremely fun quad. I haven't flown it in far too long, uh, but this formula with this Emax RS2 uh, 4,500 KV on 4S is really fun at two and a half inch. So those are my two recommendations. When you get to the three inch size, I really like the Catalyst Machine Works um, Banggod three inch. Like if that is so fun, like I put the Emax 1408, uh, 4,000 KV motors on there. I mean, it was just like a tank and it's fast and it's fun and the batteries are cheap. It's just a blast to fly that thing. Um, and then I would go ahead and really look forward, like I said, to the Tadpole HD prototype that's going to come out soon. That's if you want a bit of a lighter formula. Those are my two favorites in that class. When you go up to 4-inch, I got to say the Shocker Light 4-inch is just so much fun. And I'm really expecting the Apex 4-inch to be uh, about as equally fun. The arms on that Apex 4-inch are so nice and thick that I'm not really too worried about smashing it up. Uh, I'm really going to be careful because I'm going to be running some big motors on there. But other than that, the other 4-inch I really like is the Armitan Gecko HD. That is if you want to run really large motors, 1805, 2004, or these new varieties that you're seeing lately, 2203.5 uh, by Diatone. Um, that really looks interesting. Those type of sizes are something that you would run on a four inch like those. What are the three inch and four inch and whatnot that you like to do? <laughs> Muwe said, don't say it so loud, but he just ordered the rest of his banger build. Yes. Um, are you going to start streaming? Says Mike. Yes, I'm going to try to do every Tuesday at 7.30 Central Standard Time. Um, one stream a week is probably what I'm shooting for right now. I'm hoping I can keep that up. I may have to take the occasional day off, but uh, I feel like I'm going to just keep doing a poll on Saturday, discuss the topic on Tuesday. That seems to be working out. You guys are really participating. So thanks to everybody watching. Thanks for everybody who's voted in the polls. Over 400 people in the last poll. So it's really making it a fun time to discuss some of these topics. Um, yeah, the Gecko. Uh, well, I guess there's not a Gecko specific HD. It's just the Gecko. I like the 4-inch because if you go watch my video, I put a Cadex Vista in a Gecko build on 4-inch, I put the Beta FPV 1805 motors, and that flew just uh, outstandingly well. I really, really loved that one. Um, some dude says, <laughs> Rip Mogui, uh, we appreciate what you do. Thanks, Jeff. I uh, appreciate you guys, too. Now, when you get to 5-inch, there are a ton of options out there. So whether you're freestyle or racing, uh, it's really just a plethora. Now, I'm going to make a video very soon on my top five freestyle frames. Um, but spoiler alerts, they are in no particular order. The Armitan Gecko slash, or not Gecko, the Armitan Marmot slash Badger. The Catalyst Machine Works Bangod slash Shocker Tank. And I say slash because they're kind of similar, both of these. The Apex 5-inch, um, the... Uh, Hyperlite Glide, not the Hyperlite, I'm sorry, the FPV Cycle, not Hyperlite, FPV Cycle Glide, and uh, I would also have to say that the, um, uh, what's the last one on the list? The Source One, the Source One is the other one. If you are on a budget, you no longer have to shop at uh, one of the overseas shops if you don't want to, and I really, really appreciate um Team Black Sheep for releasing these open source designs, helping the community um, get things for cheap. They were really the first ones that were kind of uh, helping you to defeat those cloners. Uh, so good job on that, Team Black Sheep. Uh, all of the Source 1 varieties, they have a new V4 out that I actually have. I'm going to be building that up soon. I'm going to do a budget HD build, see how cheap I can get an HD build in the Air 4. I'm going to see if I can actually beat the price of one of these Roma HDs. I don't know if I'm going to be able to because that thing is so gosh darn awful cheap. But those are kind of my um, freestyle recommendations for build it yourself. 
Uh, Papa Tree is here. Hey, Mike Bergman, thank you for the super chat, man. I really appreciate that. Uh, he says, I appreciate you. We need good content creators who live stream. I appreciate that, man. You know, I didn't know if I could actually live stream because it's it's very strange. Like I, I for a long time, I did a lot of public speaking at work. And I also did a lot of public speaking in grad school. But outside of that, you know, two or three year period, I'm really kind of like a not super social person. So I found that I could make these videos when I'm by myself. And it's very strange. Like I found it a lot easier to speak to an auditorium of 300 people than it was to speak to a conference room of 10 or 15 people. And I didn't know why that was. And I, I finally realized it's because in an auditorium of 300 people, I can't see them. And so when I'm talking to my camera, I can't see the people. So I'm comfortable in my little room. And I didn't think, I didn't know what a live stream was going to be like. I thought it was going to be like talking to a conference room of 15 or 20 people. I, I thought it was just going to be nerves. I didn't know if I could speak. I thought my superpower of, of this channel was being in a dark little room by myself and just letting things come out. I didn't know if I could do it on the spot live without any preparation. But you guys have been so great and talking me through this and participating in the chat and participating in the polls. So it's really thanks to you guys. So I'm really happy to facilitate this discussion and just let us all talk through a lot of these topics. I like to talk this stuff too. So it's really cool to talk shop, to meet and interact with a lot of you guys. Joe Kruppi is here. He says two of the fake. That's probably in reference to the shocker. Me Drone is here. He is looking at the RC Empower 1202 and a half. Yes. Um, the Spocker. <laughs> Mo Blades, uh, what's going down, man? Um, me, me Drone says, what did you go to school for? I originally started out as an engineering major. Uh, I worked at NASA for several years while I was going to school. A full NASA employment reveal story at 50,000 subscribers. So if you want to hear the full story of how I started working in a NASA robotics lab at 17 years old, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. When we get to 50,000 subs, I'll make a whole video telling that story in detail. Um, so I was an electrical engineering major at first. While I was working at NASA in the robotics division, I kind of started to figure out that uh, even though my father's an electrical engineer, my grandfather was an electrical engineer, I thought I was going to be an electrical engineer, but I started to realize I liked computer um, science type stuff a little bit more. So I ended up shifting majors to management information systems. I've been gone from NASA for quite a long time now. I'm more in the healthcare space now doing research, analytics, and, and optimization of workflows. And uh, I went to grad school a while back for Grins to get an MBA. And so that was where I did most of that public speaking. I really do recommend that, especially if your company has tuition reimbursement. I got most of that master's program paid for uh, by my employer. So if you do have tuition reimbursements, go ahead and take advantage of that at your company. It's free money. Uh, I just like learning stuff. I like going to school. You know, before I started grad school, after I finished my bachelor's, uh, I decided just to take a class for fun. I took a creative writing class for fun. I was going to take one class as a break. And uh, I enjoyed it so much that I ended up doing that for years. I took like three or four creative writing classes. I ended up taking three or four film classes. Uh, by the end of that, I was a TA for one of those video production classes. That's why you see like all the green screen and gear and stuff on the channel here. Um, that's kind of my competitive advantage in FPV is that I know how to shoot, I know how to edit, I know how to write and all that stuff here. And I know how to compare products for people because I do that professionally for a while to help large companies make purchase decisions and uh, so, yeah, that's what I've been doing for, that's what I did for school. That's what I went to school for. Hopefully that answers that. Um, Mike says, I hear you, I'm an introvert. Yeah, it's, it's really weird. Like at certain topics, I can sit there and talk all day. FPV is one of them. Uh, for years and years, I tended to collect hobbies. I would do some hobbies for a year or two, some hobbies for six months. And FPV is the longest running hobby I've ever had for years. And I enjoyed it because it allowed me to, 
get a little bit back into my creative side of creating these videos for you guys, tap into some of that. That's why on the channel, sometimes you'll see little skits, you'll see little clips from movies and stuff because, um, you know, I really would like to go teach a film class or something somewhere, but that's my way of like keeping that passion alive and incorporating it and combining it with my FPV passion. Carbon Cage is here. How's it going? Um, I can't believe how much stuff you've done, Mike. Yeah, it's been crazy. I've, I've bounced around a few different industries. Uh, it's been just really right place at the right time. A lot of luck. Um, you know, it doesn't always work out. There's been some of those tight ones where, you know, you, you, you know, I was very close to getting laid off a couple of times. You know, it happens to everybody in every industry. Um, a lot of my buddies who are still at NASA, um, they're under a lot of stress because even if they're working for a major contractor, uh, I've been in meetings, big meetings in my new industry where I would get texts from a buddy who's still at NASA saying, well, Congress is voting on the next big project for the next mission going to wherever, the next shuttle, the next whatever they're going to build. And if we get the contracts, we get to tear up the pink slips that everybody has printed on their desk. If we lose the contract, then we pick up those pink slips and we go home. That's the kind of stress those guys are under. So uh, I do miss that NASA environment, but I don't miss that stress uh, for sure. So <laughs> that explains the astronaut. Yeah, <laughs> that does. Uh, Eric Toft, enjoy the content. My multi G Pre is about to have our first DJI Plus this year. You got a link to your channel cheat sheet. Uh, I discussed a lot of those best practices on uh, Joshua Bardwell's channel. Uh, he has a video. I'll put it in the link uh, to this video uh, about DJI racing. We kind of go over the best practices as far as how far to space out. Um, I was racing at the night spot, but last night I was the only one on DJI, and I almost flew analog. But I was like, nah, DJI all the way. I didn't want to be able to see. If I'm going to be crashing into concrete, I at least want to be able to see what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying, guys? So, yes, I'm hoping that MultiG is, MultiGP is going to adopt a lot more HD um, soon. They're working hard to come up with solutions. Uh, but if you're... Uh, race director has an open mind. You'll be able to fly HD fine. Just get a little spaced out. You know, it's pandemic anyways, guys. Social distancing is the perfect spacing for DJI. Make sure you're 8 to 10 feet away because sometimes 6 feet just isn't enough. I love DJI spacing. Personally, when I go to the store, I wish everyone would space out away from me as if I was flying a DJI HD. I love if they would stay 10 to 12 feet away, that would be perfect. That's what we do. Uh, any opinions on the Rush VTX? I know you're a DJI guy. I actually have the new Rush. Uh, it's probably behind me somewhere. The new Solo VTX that's supposed to go to like 8 million megawatts or whatever. I'm going to install that in my 7-inch and fly it up. In fact, I should have already done that, but I've been busy with a bunch of other reviews. Uh, Mike. Bergman says, Congress doesn't understand. They don't vote for some of that science and technology stuff. I do agree. Um, so, Jeff, the Rush Tiny Tank is the one I've used the most. I really, really like that one. I used that one. That was my preferred um, analog racing VTX back when I was still on analog. Um, so they're generally considered right up there with, like, the Unify or the uh, Tramp as, like, the top-tier VTXs. Eric Toft. Man, thanks a lot for that $10 super chat. Really appreciate that. Yeah, feel free. I'm going to be making a lot more uh, videos sharing my experiences. We're about to go into qualifier um, season. I ran the multi-GB qualifier in 2020 on DJI. I got a sportsman class ranking of, I think, 255. I'm going to be doing DJI on the qualifier with the open racer uh, i shift racing frames only about once a year this is my 2021 last year in 2020 i did the america hd those are the two best racing frames that accommodate hd on the market right now and the reason i say that they both are is they're the only two that i know of that completely separate the vista unit from your stack on this one the vista unit you can see four holes at the top it's actually suspended 
away from the stack in this pod. This TPU pod is ultra thick. Here's another version of that pod. You can see how thick the walls are and check out how beautifully shiny blue this Sane Smart TPU came out of that Prusa. Mm, beautiful. Mwah. Jab Skyward. <laughs> Carbon Cage is building up a three inch at the moment. What would your current choice of motor be for a three inch freestyle? Well, uh, I really, really like the Emacs 1408 high KB. I think it's 4,000. But that was a year or so ago. Uh, if I was building a three inch this year, I might go with the Beta FPV 1805 motor also. It depends on if you want maximum grunt or like a good compromise. If you want a good compromise of weight and power, I would go with the 1408 Emacs. If you want a little bit more just massive grunt, I would go with the 1805. And if you just want to go all the way up, you can always go to one of those 2004 motor sizes. I think that might be a little bit overkill though for three inch. I might keep that down to a, uh, a four inch for those 2004. But yeah, those would be my recommendations right there. Uh, Carbon, oh, the Solo, it's not in stock yet. Okay, yeah, yeah, they, they did. The Rush guy did tell me it's not in stock. That's why I haven't released the review. It's not because I haven't made it yet. Uh, okay, it's both of those things. But I will make it. Thank you for reminding me, uh, you guys. Uh, Mogui likes the cotton candy theme. Yes, cotton candy, sweet and low. Let me see your Tootsie Roll. I love the RC in power cotton candy colorway motors. Uh, I use that for freestyle and racing. They're getting hard to find those. Stock is uh, limited on those. Looks like a headless animal. <laughs> yes. So this is the final version of the Open Racer uh, HD canopy. Um, this is the initial design, uh, that they call is ugly. Somebody said that it looked like dog shit. Uh, so this one's actually named the dog poo frame, but I kind of like it. It's grown on me. So I'm going to build up a second one just because I've been racing for all of 2021 with only one race quad, actually all of 2022, because back then I only had the one America HD quad. So I'm crashing less and less. These are pretty tough frames. Uh, yeah, yeah, Carbon Cage, definitely check it out. If you want to see a, a, a three-inch uh, that I flew on those, I built a couple of quads up with that 1805. If you go check out the Gecko HD video, that uses those motors, and I used it on a four-inch, but it would work really good with, with three-inch as well. Um, Ghost, really enjoyed the live stream. Thanks. I will keep doing it. Um, yeah, man, I really appreciate all of it. Smalls FPV, whatever happened to Campfire? So Campfire kind of stopped producing frames. Uh, they didn't want to release the files. So one of our local pilots, who has now become one of the premier designers, um, actually designed his own kind of version that was inspired by the Campfire frame. That is the Open Racer. So everything was designed from scratch, but it, it took heavy inspiration from it. Now, if this pod looks familiar, that's because Ivan, pilot, his pilot name is Lamon, is actually the designer of the new Catalyst Machine Works Merica V2 pod. And so it's very similar design to this. Uh, that is coming out, uh, probably have it on the channel very soon as well. The new premier racing frame, they made a number of improvements on the Merica V2. That is pod was designed by Lamone as well. So stay tuned for that. I think we're going to wrap it up here, guys. Thanks to all of you guys um, for joining the live stream. And also thanks as well to Rapid Beard, sponsor of today's video. Um, go, if you have a crazy looking beard and you're looking like a homeless geek, go get yourself looking like homeless chic with some of this beard pomade that's in this kit you get everything you get the oil the pomade the brush the comb and the trim scissors all for regular price thirty dollars but if you buy it today with the link below you'll get fifty percent off only fifteen bucks makes a great gift for your bearded homeboy or your aunt if she's looking a little bit hairy these days <laughs> 
<laughs> Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Make sure and join the FPV Sales Alerts group to stay in tune with all of the sales. I do have a Patreon up. I have one member, so thank you to my first Patreon member. Uh, it's not required. You know, you can enjoy the live streams for free. Hurl me some comments, even if they're negative. I always appreciate the feedback. If I ever sound crazy or do anything crazy or you just don't like it, just let me know. Uh, it's not going to hurt my feelings. Well, maybe it might, but after I give a good cry, uh, I'll get over it. And uh, let's see what else is coming up. Lots of really good content. Vote for the polls on Saturday for their live stream on Tuesday. Uh, we'll see what we're going to come up with next week. Thank you guys for joining and catch you next time. You have been on the Johnny Five channel, the channel, the show where John is always right. And if you agree with him, you could be right too. Thanks, guys.